two minutes for one or two minutes we will give for people to who are just joining before we start. Good morning, colleagues. Welcome to this training workshop on guidelines and best practices for MSMEs to assure resiliency and progress towards a circular economy in sustainable resource management and critical raw material chain solutions in Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. Sorry, I'm having a bad cough, so I'm going to take a sip of water once in a while. <coughs> Sorry. Few ho housekeeping announcements. There is interpretation into English and Russian. You can get the interpretation button at the bottom and choose the language you want. If you are not seeing the button, click on that three dots and you will get the option to choose interpretation. This meeting is being recorded and uh, it will be finally published online on our website. If you have any questions, you can raise your hands and uh, come up and ask the questions after the presentations are over. Or if you are having any comments, you can post it in the chat box also. We will be monitoring the chat function. With this, uh, let me once again welcome all of you colleagues to this uh, national training workshop on guidelines and best practices for MSMEs to assure resiliency and progress towards a circular economy in sustainable resource management and critical raw material supply chain solutions in Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. I am jo I'm joining from UNECE Geneva along with me I have my colleague Nadesha Kamar Kuala, and uh, who is a program manager for energy efficiency, who is helping me with this uh, organization of the workshop. And with me also are the two resource persons who will be providing this workshop, Dimitri Palaksin who is the mining engineer from uh, and a hydrogeologist from Kyrgyzstan and Georgi Freiman, mining engineer and a geologist from Kazakhstan. All of us welcome you uh, 
to this uh, workshop. A few words of the background of the workshop before I hand over to the eminent experts. UNFC, uh, UNECE, UN Economic Commission for Europe is an implementing partner in the UN Development Account Project Global Initiative towards post-COVID-19 resurgence of the MSME sector. This project is led by UNCTAD and ESQUA, the Regional Commission for West Asia. This workshop is being held under the aegis of this project. The overall goal of the project is to strengthen capacity and resilience of micro, small and medium enterprises or MSMEs in developing countries, economies in transition to mitigate the economic and social impact of the global COVID-19 crisis. So this project started as soon as the COVID started, a few months after the lockdown of our economies in 2020, and in 2022, it is almost coming to a close today. A lot of activities by UNEC, as well as our partner organizations, UNCTAD and UNEXQA, uh, have concentrated on various aspects of MSMEs. In the framework of this project, UNEC's Sustainable Energy Division focuses on developing guidelines and best practices for MSMEs to assure resiliency and progress towards circular economy in sustainable resource management and critical raw material supply chain solutions on one side and energy efficient, efficient products on another side. This workshop is about the critical raw materials. We all know that a lot of transition is happening around the world. World is moving towards a more greener economy and the low carbon transitions are happening in the energy sector, in the automobile sector, and in the digital sector, and also everywhere in all over the economy, uh, new green solutions and technologies are being brought in. All these technologies require a lot of critical raw materials like lithium for the batteries, uh, nickel, cobalt, graphite, uh, that also are required for the batteries. You, you need rare earth elements for the magnets that will be used in the uh, wind turbines. You need um, rare uh, elements like uh, rare metals like germanium, which, will be, which has to be used in solar panels and so on. Uh, there is a list of about 20 to 30 critical raw materials uh, based on the demand for that and the supply chain risk uh, of getting those material. Uh, why there is a demand, we all know, because we are having this new technologies uh, coming up. For example, the electric car revolution that is going to happen will need a lot of more materials than a traditional gasoline powered car. Similarly, uh, for other technologies, we need all these materials which are uh, not very uh, well available today because they are not needed in the present technologies. Uh, but tomorrow, the demand for these materials are going to go up like 5,000 percentage or 6,000 percentage from what it is today. The World Bank estimates that by 2050, the trade of minerals will exceed the trade of oil and gas. So we are going to see a new world tomorrow. Uh, minerals are going to become the new oil in just uh, 20, 25 years. With this in the mind, uh, UNAC under this project has done uh, a global study on how small medium enterprises can uh, take advantage of the situation and uh, become more resilient and, and uh, 
better participant, an equal participant in this uh, in this new economy, along along with the big companies. Uh, you know, it is not just the big companies that can uh, um, make the value chain uh, resilient. We need a lot of small companies, uh, often one person consulting firms to small teams who provide a lot of services to the supply chain. So we have done the global study to do uh, understand how MSMEs can uh, support this. And uh, based on that global study, we have selected six countries where the study can be done at a very uh, local level. So we have done the local studies or national studies in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan. Six countries in total, uh, three countries in uh, Southeast or East Europe, and three countries from Central Asia. Today, we will be discussing on the studies which were done in Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. Both the countries have several deposits of critical raw materials and also has a good potential to discover more. MSMEs can benefit from opportunities that arise from assuring critical raw material supply that will be crucial for the economic transition, but also for the economy recovery that is happening today after the uh, end, almost end uh, of the COVID-19 uh, lockdowns. Countries who are ready to do that with trained people, with uh, well-aligned legislation and platforms to support uh, entrepreneurs who, who are supporting this MSMEs, uh, countries can support from several value addition approaches. So value addition means you are not just gaining revenue from the raw material, but you are uh, getting additional revenue from premium products. You know, UNEC has developed the United Nations Framework Classification for Resource, UNFC, and United Nations Resource Management System, UNRMS, to assess, track, and manage the critical raw materials uh, in an integrated and sustainable manner with all other resources that are, that, that are available in a country. The studies we have done globally, as well as in the six countries, uh, I have just mentioned, uh, shows that countries can support MSMEs in developing alternate business models by optimizing policies and regulations. These changes could allow MSMEs to have better access to data, information, and knowledge, enhanced ma market access, access to technology, and finance. Entrepreneurial skill facilitation and training of employees are other key challenges that need to be addressed by the companies and governments. Our global study has also recommended an establishment of MSME Raw Material Alliance for Circular Economy, or MRM ACE. We think that such an alliance of small and medium companies, if it could be realized in some way, could provide a platform for all people who are interested to come share knowledge, uh, network and gain from each other. Because this is not uh, a situation where people can work uh, independently. MSMEs have to be part of a value network. And this can happen only if we can have a stable platform where people can regularly share experiences and information. With that, uh, I will stop here and uh, go forward with the program. We will have a first talk uh, starting now, uh, which will be on the study which is done in Kyrgyzstan, and that will be given by Dimitri Palakstin. Followed by that, there will be a talk by Georgi Freeman on a similar study that was done in Kazakhstan. So I will invite Dimitri to come first and give his presentation. Dimitri is a trained hydrogeologist and a geologist 
holding a PhD in geosciences. He is currently an em employee of a mining company in Kyrgyzstan and also serves us as a consultant for this study. With this, I will invite Dimitri to come and give his presentation. Thank you. A uh, good day, uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, let me start my presentation. So the material uh, was prepared uh, for uh, during the uh, period of 2020-2022. So now I'm gonna share my screen. Give me a minute, please. Here. Uh, my presentation uh, is uh, devoted to, to the uh, guidelines, uh, guiding principles, and the uh, the uh, best practices. Uh, again, um, um, when it comes to the uh, uh, MM, uh, SMEs, so development of uh, SMEs. Uh, MSMEs can be related to certain countries, so not always corporations and their enterprises can cover the um, uh, requirements or demands of the uh, population, especially when it comes to services. A big uh, amount of, um, uh, of the niche uh, is uh, uh, you know, given to uh, micro, small, and the medium enterprises that uh, allows to uh, solve the issues when it, uh, economic and social, uh, you know, question, issues of the um, uh, of the of the given country. With all the attractability, MSME has uh, uh, its own cons. Uh, you know, uh, when it is like when there is no stability. So it was also. Um, demonstrated in uh, 2020 and 2021. Uh, so um, starting from um, March 24, uh, we had the first uh, uh, cases of COVID-19 and uh, starting from uh, 24th uh, March, uh, uh, you know, we had uh, introduced the emergency situation regime that uh, lasted till end of April. But, um, very strict uh, quarantine uh, measures were introduced during the whole summer of 2020. Based on the data of IMF, uh, the global economy uh, decreased to 3%, uh, but uh, the internal uh, uh, you know, internally in uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, we can we can see that the economy, the economy of Kyrgyzstan, uh, it was affected uh, the most in the whole Central uh, Asia. Uh, so we saw the impact of uh, COVID uh, pandemic on all different sectors of uh, economy. Sorry, one minute. Give me a minute. So the GDP was affected uh, also in Kyrgyzstan and I'm gonna show you. So as a result uh, of uh, the questionnaire that was conducted, only 34% of enterprises uh, didn't uh, uh, didn't see the decrease of their, uh, you know, activity. But again, we can see in what sector was that. That was IT sector uh, and delivery sector, courier. But all the other enterprises, um, one way or the other, they suffered. As a result of the uh, questionnaire that we had, uh, so we saw that uh, the companies, they need um, a few months from 
back to their pre-crisis uh, period. So as you can see on this uh, graph, uh, the inflation in 2020 reached 9.7, and by the end of 2021, it reached 12.3%. Uh, so at this uh, um, time, so they was, the capital uh, was uh, leaving and the improve, improvement, we saw the uh, drain of the uh, capital. And then of course, uh, what was happening uh, in 2021, um, it was of great concern. Uh, and uh, we saw when it, uh, when it uh, comes to the investment, uh, we saw the uh, drain of the capital that, uh, reached 26.4% and the private capital uh, reduced to 2.6 times. So, and of course the drain of the capital went to the geology, uh, the here um, and the retail as well. But you can see lots of, uh, you know, different uh, chain value uh, was affected. And uh, based on this, findings the uh, state of small enterprises uh, was not very good and the state uh, the, took certain measures on improving uh, the uh, you know situation of small enterprises so all those uh, steps they were uh, you know related to certain enterprises so what they did the government um, they uh, helped them with the tax uh, regime because, of course, uh, all the uh, collection of tax uh, couldn't be done on time. So they softened that. Uh, during the study of the situation uh, of Kyrgyzstan, so we saw that there was equalizing of tax implication, and then the specialists started recommending the new model of development. And uh, they were suggesting um, new reforms uh, on uh, to work on different directions, um, is to adopt uh, energy structure um, as one of the catalysts, uh, you know, on development in Kyrgyzstan, development, uh, digital development in Kyrgyzstan, um, diversification uh, for expert uh, services uh, and uh, also small enterprises and reduce the deficit of uh, affordable uh, uh, services and uh, of course uh, education and logistics. If we look uh, at the uh, mining sector, a certain uh, changes were uh, there as well. So the investments reduced uh, uh, when it comes to ge geology investigation. Second uh, position is so the uh, when it uh, when it comes to the uh, production and generation of uh, fossil fuel uh, was also reduced uh, because uh, it comes uh, to the so the uh, it's all interrelated because covering the costs of the uh, services and the goods uh, also increased and uh, during the pandemic uh, especially when it uh, happened in 2020 uh, here you can see on this slide i try to reflect uh, uh, how, uh, what kind of changes uh, were uh, made when it comes to uh, the oil the extraction, oil production, and, uh, and not just oil and gas as well. So you can see in oil it increased, but in uh, gas it uh, reduced, but this is because of the geology uh, peculiarities of the country. When it comes to the critical uh, raw material um, in the territory of uh, Kyrgyzstan, during the Soviet uh, era, uh, we uh, found very rare uh, 
uh, land parcels, uh, it is uh, could say two and the medium one is sort of say, and the others are insignificant. Uh, when uh, on tw in 2021, uh, so we put on the balance on the uh, one uh, area of Kutisai 2, which is uh, located in Kimin um, district uh, Chui. Uh, so like, so that you have an idea, it's uh, in Bishkek, it's, uh, Bish Bishkek is located in Chui Oblast. So Kutisai was uh, operational since 1958 uh, till uh, mid 90s. Uh, so the carrier was working and uh, presently uh, this, uh, uh, area is uh, non-operational. So you can see, uh, so it's basically preserved. Out of uh, 266 licenses, the companies were, uh, you know, uh, operational in six uh, uh, different areas for when it comes to investigation uh, of for fossil fuels, maybe a situation has changed because the laws also changed. So, based on the existing uh, social, ecological, environmental uh, realities, uh, Kyrgyzstan is facing um, on introduction uh, into uh, action the sy uh, management system of uh, the uh, natural resources. So we have the management uh, system on uh, resources of uh, UN, and uh, so it's all uh, it goes in uh, correlation uh, of uh, resource management of uh, UN. It's called UN resource management system, and uh, so it goes in the close uh, cooperation with uh, uh, UNFC. So also the development and introduction of the uh, resource management system can uh, bring a good social and environmental uh, results um, to liquidate, reduce poverty and liquidate the conflict. So about the sustainable uh, management of the resources is not possible without the uh, close cooperation of the uh, political and management, uh, you know, uh, system of the country and um, state, uh, public and uh, private sector, uh, uh, like uh, Mr. Harinshan, we all, so to say, we are all in the same boat. We have to work together. So briefly uh, about the uh, United Nations framework classification for resources is quite a universal. Um, it's a universal system uh, where the uh, provisions and reserves of the uh, fossil fuels uh, is based on three uh, criteria. Uh, so basically it's ecological and social uh, uh, state of uh, you know uh, li uh, life of the project uh, F is status uh, and uh, uh, implementation of the project uh, uh, and the G is geological geological study. So uh, this is how it looks. If uh, we are brief now, uh, so this uh, groups of Classification, uh, framework qualification for resources. So this is uh, the, uh, you know, you can see it later on the uh, graph. Uh, so it defines the level of uh, uh, well-being of the social and economic conditions for providing commercial uh, sustainability of the project uh, and which in, uh, impact the uh, market prices and second uh, group uh, is F that defines the level of uh, uh, studies and the good conditions and the liabilities that are required for realization of the plans of the uh, mining uh, works and projects development. Uh, uh, and uh, so before, earlier I was showing you the 3D version. Uh, so basically this is how it looks in, in the table on um, distribution of the class. 
So two, three years ago, uh, our colleagues uh, from Kyrgyzstan, they were uh, processing and uh, defining the classification of the Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, and now it's using the system, the classification system. And they were actually comparing it to the uh, UNFC. So you can um, study it all on the website, UN website. Uh, it's all uh, published there. Uh, so, and you can learn uh, more uh, in details about this guidelines. So in the UNFC uh, classification, it uh, covers four main uh, blocks. It's uh, uh, fossil um, uh, minerals uh, and then energy. Uh, energy like uh, oil and gas, uh, uranium, uh, that are important for energy and anthropogenic uh, resources and uh, that are important for storage and also the renewable energy. Um, so solar, uh, wind and thermal uh, sources as well. When it comes uh, to logical development of uh, UNFC, uh, uh, was the uh, syst uh, management system uh, of the resources, so which is the which becomes the voluntary standard of uh, integrated and sustainable uh, management uh, resource management uh, within the frameworks of the state uh, and the public, uh, private, and the civil society. So uh, we can include all the counterparts on the regional, uh, national, or project level. So uh, UNFC uh, and uh, UNRM, uh, they uh, you know uh, don't uh, actually take over and don't cancel the uh, previously used uh, system. So, and they just being the, they are actually complementary uh, to that system and they allow uh, to make decisions based on the uh, operation of those uh, mining areas. Uh, using uh, the uh, UNFC will allow uh, to attract not just investors in the mining sector, but also it will allow uh, the small enterprises. And that will be, you know, that will be good for uh, large businesses. Uh, using uh, UNFC uh, will take into consideration the social uh, issues uh, during production and the usage of uh, uh, UN, UNRMS uh, will help us to see uh, what is happening in the uh, mining and energy sector and also other sectors of economy in Kyrgyzstan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dimitri, for that um, very uh, comprehensive overview of the study you have done. Um, I have posted a link of the website where the study can be uh, downloaded and uh, if people are, uh, need more details, they can <clears throat> read the report. You may have some questions. Uh, we will uh, hold the questions for a, some time. Uh, we will hear the next presentation from uh, Georgie Freiman on, on a similar study that has been done for Kazakhstan. And then after that study, we can take up any questions. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and uh, ask it, or you can put your comments, questions on the chat also. So with that, I will now um, welcome Georgie Freiman to give the next presentation. Georgie Freiman is a mining engineer, geologist, a candidate of geological and mineralogical sciences, and he is a specialist in the field of exploration and evaluation of ore deposits in Kazakhstan. He is one of the initiators of the implementation of CRISCO standards in Kazakhstan a few years ago, and he has been the chairman of the Professional Society for Geoscientist in Kazakhstan. So with that, I welcome Georgie to give the presentation. Georgie, please.
Good day, dear colleagues. So uh, the, you are familiar, familiar with the topic of uh, today's uh, discussion. So I'm going to uh, talk about the uh, study that we uh, conducted in Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is uh, a big uh, country uh, with a small uh, population. Uh, you can see here 1.4 uh, million square meters. We have only 19 uh, million uh, population. So, uh, of course, um, that is uh, complicated for logistics. Uh, and there's a large distances between the uh, residential uh, you know districts and also the continental location of uh, our country because uh, you know Kazakhstan is uh, first of all is uh, natural resources So um, I'm changing the slides, but there's some delay. I apologize for that. It's very slow. The slides are not moving. So here on this slide, you can see the map of the mineral resources of Kazakhstan. Uh, you can see a large amount of different uh, minerals and uh, 2.5 uh, thousand. And if you add uh, different other ores, uh, so then you can see uh, that you know that where the, our country stands. If you can. Uh, add that there are ore occurrences, so then it will be more. So the role of the oil and gas and mining sector is quite essential. Uh, the uh, share of uh, GDP is 20% uh, share of oil and gas and uh, in uh, GDP is 20%, share of oil and gas and mining sector in export is 80% and uh, totally occupied uh, people in um, the economy is uh, uh, 8,780. Uh, 8, uh, so this is in uh, thousands, yeah? And uh, you can see, uh, so those people who are uh, busy, uh, occupied in the economy, uh, in production, in industry is uh, six, uh, 149,000. So and the majority are in export. If we talk about uh, participation of uh, MSMEs in, uh, in Kazakhstan economy, so you can see that uh, second part of uh, this um, area is quite essential. Um, yes, you can see that how uh, people are occupied in this sector. Yeah, and in development countries, how uh, the situation stands. So, so the share is quite uh, high. It reaches up to 60, 70%. So MMSP, uh, you know, certain uh, uh, part in the uh, businesses is related to um, MSMEs. It's because the criteria in Kazakhstan uh, is very low. So uh, it means if your income is lower than uh, 200,000, then uh, you are a uh, micro uh, enterprise. Uh, if your income is uh, 2 million, then you are a small enterprise and you are up to $20,000, then you are a uh, medium enterprise. And over 20 uh, million, dollars than your large enterprise and we understand uh, as soon as a small enterprise starts uh, certain uh, 
uh, you know, a generation, uh, then it will become a medium and large enterprise. So this kind of uh, uh, dynamic uh, we observed uh, in different enterprises uh, starting from 2017 till 2020. As you can see in economy, the number of uh, small enterprises uh, rose, uh, it grew significantly. Um, and the number of uh, employed uh, in, uh, in MSME uh, also, uh, you know, increased, uh, but a uh, number of people uh, working uh, reduced in mining industry. But in 19, in 20, the, you know, you can see that numbers are increasing because uh, there are big amount of uh, enterprises, the juniors, so to say, uh, in geology, it's related to the law on uh, uh, mineral, uh, natural resources. So those uh, people who worked and were involved uh, during pandemic uh, period also reduced significantly. So uh, the, um, you can see a few words about the uh, mineral and raw uh, material base uh, CRM in Kazakhstan. So here uh, we can see uh, very significant uh, types of uh, ores. Uh, we have 30 different types. Uh, so in Kazakhstan, out of 30, we have 20. So uh, we have uh, certain of them, rubber, uh, for example. So again, when it comes to generation from your own raw material, uh, this is the yellow, uh, green is for imported raw material and few uh, position that is not uh, generated and not uh, produced. Here on this slide, you can see uh, what is being uh, produced and generated, uh, and the volumes of production uh, uh, for personal use or for um, export. All the critical uh, types of CRM you can divide onto four uh, big groups. Uh, uh, first group, so those uh, mineral uh, fossil fuels that are coming from their own uh, uh, places, you know, of where they are found. So the second, uh, the second is the CRM uh, that is found, uh, you know, there on the way. So third group uh, that is there in complex areas of Kazakhstan, but extract, uh, not extracted because of the technical issues, but uh, because we have a metallurgical uh, requirements, then they're being imported. And the fourth type, uh, we, we have uh, eight uh, CRMs that are there. Uh, in the complex, uh, you know, deposits areas. So we have two reasons uh, they are uh, there during the metallurgical uh, generation of the main components of these deposits. It's because of the technologies that are used. Uh, the CRMs uh, that are located in the secondary uh, sources uh, we are here defining the fifth group because here we can see the potential uh, sources. Uh, so these are uh, the waste basically from, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, different uh, uh, waste when it comes to uh, mining area. And uh, the the places where uh, basically the uh, 
pond tailings, uh, tailing ponds where we store all that the waste. So Dmitry was uh, sharing those uh, classification uh, of the United Nations framework, uh, classification for resources, so that we can uh, define uh, those five uh, CRM groups and uh, uh, place it in this uh, framework classification so that we can understand its roles uh, and priorities and possible usage. Also, these five groups of uh, CRM that um, exist uh, here that can be found in Kazakhstan, they can be divided into three groups uh, that are you know, being generated and uh, they're quite prospective uh, and we can allocate a certain status uh, to that based on the uh, certain categories of uh, classes and subclasses um, in um, accordance to the uh, United Nations Framework Classification for Resources. So here uh, we can uh, see the classification uh, of uh, certain natural uh, you know, ores. Uh, it's uh, uh, phosphate chalk. So we can see the uh, quite wide expert uh, supply in different countries. In um, 26 uh, countries, uh, these uh, phosphorites are being exported. So here, phosphorites, we can see this belongs to the first group of CRM. Uh, and we can uh, define it that those uh, reserves that uh, we have, uh, according to the category and subcategory, uh, can uh, that uh, take a certain niche, uh, like they're um, generated and extracted and highly affected uh, category of A, B, and C1 uh, category. So this is the classification of this existing uh, deposit. Uh, place it on the high tech category of uh, UNFC. Again, the you can see the EF and the G is the potential uh, for later uh, deposit. On this example uh, of the second group of CRM, here, uh, those uh, components that exist here, uh, you know, uh, that exist there uh, as a uh, fouling uh, of those ores or admixtures of those ores. So those, uh, that is the extraction active that is working adequately and the CRM that uh, exists and is being uh, defined. So here we talk about the uh, call or uh, surma, kajal that we talk about. Uh, so this is being used uh, and we get an amazing product, but because uh, it's not studied well uh, on uh, this uh, G uh, part, it will not uh, get uh, good uh, adequacy because again, it's not, the, it doesn't stand there very high. Uh, so new uh, possibilities for uh, small and medium enterprises for um, improving the eco economy. It uh, doesn't mean that uh, yesterday uh, there was pandemic and today we don't have it and now it's uh, we're feeling better. It depends on the demand because uh, the potential, uh, the ca capacity of CRM uh, is quite high when we talk about Kazakhstan region. So with the modernization of the new uh, code of uh, natural resources, we have also more new mineral uh, companies. And again, all of them, they uh, fall under the category of small businesses. It's not even uh, medium business. 
so basically that are just starting to develop. That's why a couple of slides uh, before we saw that the number of uh, small businesses uh, grew significantly during a uh, pandemic um, period in 2020. And the small businesses, um, these are also the geological uh, companies that are serving servicing the uh, mining sector. So here, uh, first of all, we uh, have to give credit to legislation that uh, legislation changes that uh, happened uh, during the last three years, so that they actually increase the effect uh, on the post pandemic situation. Uh, area but of course before pandemic the government uh, adopted different programs on supporting uh, small uh, medium businesses that allowed um, you know to uh, create a new impulse uh, for uh, development of the sector uh, of, of this business in different uh, sectors of economy. So we had uh, the state support uh, when it comes to the area of service. During the pandemic, you know, the activity of those uh, enterprises dropped and then again, the, the tax uh, regime was uh, reconsidered during this period and then we had the series of uh, other local instruments uh, for assistance so that uh, the enterprises could deal with this force majeure situation and then um, recover from a uh, pandemic when it comes to the um, adoption of the uh, UNFC uh, our classification we have a big problem actually here so today uh, like uh, for the past 30 years the government of Kazakhstan doesn't have a clear understanding of the uh, raw material uh, base of the country uh, so that uh, of course uh, led to the uh, to lagging behind and what what you can see here on this graph see blue, uh, the indigo uh, we can see so this is the indicators for extraction and green um, small smaller share so which is like a lower than 30 percent for gold which is 29.7 On copper, uh, you can see uh, it's 8.1%. Uh, uh, and uh, on zinc, uh, we see it's 21.6%. So um, we can see that we are in the, uh, in the risk uh, system. And at the same time, for the level of uh, government, when it comes to the management, like in Scandinavia, uh, 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 of course, the UNFC classification plays a great role and the UNRMS as well, but it's still on the early stage. So when we continue uh, to talk about this, we need to emphasize that uh, to get out of the situation, we have to introduce a complex of different types of uh, activities. And based on the uh, legislation base uh, and the introduction of the reporting uh, system on uh, the raw materials, so a big, uh, significant uh, 
uh, role would play uh, the uh, United Nations uh, framework classification for resources and it has to be uh, adopted on the government level. And uh, as you know, colleagues, you know, professionals, so we, have, we have you here during uh, the workshop today. So lots of problems um, are related to the fact that, you know, the, our politicians are not very well indicate, uh, educated uh, and not don't have the expertise in this area. That's why we have to turn to the uh, professional uh, geological companies so that we can promote uh, the ideas uh, from bottom to top. But uh, I think that in most of the cases, uh, this is the bigger effect can uh, create, uh, it can create actually a larger effect when, uh, when it comes from uh, top to bottom, especially when we talk about the geological uh, system of uh, risk assessment. So when, you know, the uh, order was given, then the whole movement started and this movement was quite active. So also it's worth to uh, mention that we have uh, good conditions for uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, especially in this, uh, in our sector. Uh, small, medium uh, businesses also um, is there when it comes to construction uh, materials in, uh, development, uh, uh, industrial and the road, uh, construction of roads. So when it comes to different other uh, sectors, we have the company of faster service that uh, uh, belongs to the uh, medium business so they have uh, also different uh, extractions uh, and they use different other oil companies uh, uh, in different other types of uh, CRMs. In different types of uh, CRMs, our MSMEs are not very active. Facilitation to business and registration of business uh, is uh, conducted uh, in accordance uh, with the single uh, legislation and the code of the Republic of Kazakhstan. So um, we, you can register your company online um, within 15 minutes. And even during the pandemic uh, period, the number of uh, companies, um, you know, was increasing significantly. So about the regulations and other uh, legal rules, yeah, the uh, about the uh, private uh, public partnership. Uh, so they exist basically from um, uh, the certain uh, period of uh, 2006, uh, and since then, lots of things uh, become very uh, easy and change this so again uh, we have uh, digitalization uh, introduced and then you can uh, register the company online uh, so it's quite uh, simple user friendly and convenient so we have the experience uh, of existing for five years in tough conditions of our daughter company Russian, uh, Russian daughter company that we uh, closed down three years ago because of uh, that reason, you know, there's a difficult uh, uh, procedures and control and fines. Uh, so I can say in Kazakhstan, it's uh, quite uh, transparent uh, and more efficient and on uh, small businesses is quite more uh, is quite more efficient than it is in Russian Federation. 
so here the support uh, of small enterprises uh, is uh, conducted in different uh, areas um, facilitating uh, like providing financial support organization of the network of centers to uh, support small businesses organization of uh, business incubators activities and uh, transfer uh, to the uh, you know actors of small uh, enterprises uh, into the management or rent uh, uh, the transfer uh, tra transfer of the public uh, commodities uh, to the private uh, sector so here uh, on these different areas of the district akimats we have uh, the access to data information and knowledge and uh, we have the group of uh, professional uh, support and uh, trainings uh, informational support and uh, uh, non-financial support uh, for this category of businesses. Development of uh, entrepreneurial uh, skills. Uh, so here we have uh, several programs free of charge and those are all government programs. Uh, so basically it is about uh, those types of uh, services that are uh, widely uh, used. Here you can see agriculture, construction, um, certain types of uh, production, uh, trade, and touristic services. Besides that, uh, in all uh, regions, including the uh, capital city, we have the commercial uh, training center and uh, also uh, the uh, narrow specialized courses, uh, which are uh, paid courses for certain uh, types of businesses. And access to a market the service market when it comes to the mining geological uh, sector uh, it started from uh, 1991 and uh, because of the fact that uh, privatization uh, happened in 1990s and uh, all of those who who could uh, afford that uh, so they organized um, into small enterprises and i mean except the small enterprises in this area we have uh, also medium enterprises but the majority is of course uh, in our sector uh, are enterprises who uh, occupied that niche and in our sector we can say that uh, today we have 80 companies in all of those uh, types of uh, uh, CRMs, uh, including the uh, carbon uh, you know, area, so that exists actually in our uh, market. in the carbon hydrate, uh, uh, hydrocarbon area. So the access to uh, finances uh, for the small medium enterprises in the geological mining sector of economy of Kazakhstan, uh, here we can um, you know, relate them. And they are linked uh, with those funds and providing the work. So basically it's one of the disadvantages uh, Uh, why uh, it why it happens in Kazakhstan? Uh, you know, all the large companies uh, that exist uh, in the large international market. So they, of course, are there. They uh, also open their branches in Kazakhstan, but the working capital uh, is non-existent there. And so, and of course, in the uh, exchange. Uh, stock market stock exchange market they don't exist and the perspective for expanding the uh, manufacturing process of crm in kazakhstan so those perspectives are uh, related to, from one hand 
to the production of main types of uh, you know traditional mining sector and uh, so of course we have crms uh, there so we have uh, also the number of uh, extracted uh, metals but again the fifth group that was mentioned before uh, it has the great potential in kazakhstan we have a giant amount uh, this uh, billions of tons of different wastes that are that contain um, crm so uh, they are all listed there i'm not going to spend uh, too much time on uh, mentioning them all but this is our potential this is our capacity for future and of course uh, we have to take into uh, consideration uh, you know uh, first of all the demand and the cost on the market and how we can extract them whether they are extracted so all those movements uh, happening not only from the bottom but uh, like uh, not by the entrepreneurs but also from the top uh, the movement has to be done uh, by the government we have technological uh, institutes that develop the technologies for extracting them but again we have the potential uh, so that a lot of those elements would be in demand since we are moving to the new technologies we again uh, you know became a part of a new uh, technological uh, revolution so we have to use those elements of the fifth group of crm and these are the wastes so the technologies uh, for majority of msmes uh, the potential is unlimited it's again um, it all depends on the funds that they have and also depend on the specialization of a certain type of uh, small and medium enterprises and what they're uh, you know uh, doing in the logistics uh, of the value chain and the value chain is that element that i was uh, talking before in the beginning of my presentation so uh, because of the uh, continental uh, location So for us, uh, uh, you know, it's very, it becomes very difficult to enter the global market. Because we are a landlocked uh, country and the lots of, uh, also it's very difficult for us to go to the global market and because of the sanctions uh, that uh, Russia is going through. So it also impacted Kazakhstan. Uh, so, critically important uh, raw materials that uh, that is being used uh, inside uh, the country of Kazakhstan for that uh, type of raw material we have uh, all we created all the conditions uh, to start uh, the production so here we talk about few companies that are you know, dealing with the CRM when it comes to two types of uh, CRMs. Uh, Titan uh, concentrate is one of them, which is again, it's inside the country. So we don't have any obstacles here because uh, they, you know, they're not uh, related or linked to all those uh, exports. So the conclusions uh, are listed in this slide. So they actually uh, become a proof that the, those uh, market mechanisms that uh, exist in Kazakhstan, they, they are actually quite good for development of MSMEs. The number of MSMEs uh, hasn't reduced in our sector and the, its future growth will be related to the uh, 
increase of uh, demand uh, in uh, uh, in this uh, same area uh, in the same area of uh, uh, mineral resources management and again uh, we need to uh, maximize uh, that uh, me medium and small uh, businesses and also here recommendations for msmes in kazakhstan here in our traditional situation when we have lots of uh, actors you know of crms and if we look at the dynamics that uh, the UN is publishing the number of those uh, minerals uh, of the of that uh, raw materials is increasing, and we can assume that we have uh, good conditions, uh, like good natural conditions uh, for that, and we have. Uh, uh, a good interaction uh, of small and medium enterprises in Kazakhstan and the number of uh, uh, required uh, CRMs is here and we can continue uh, finding uh, different other raw materials that can uh, help Kazakhstan. But again, since the green economy uh, took place, so that would also uh, facilitate the increase of certain types of uh, Sierra. So here, when it comes to the future improvement of uh, uh, MSMEs, we have the roadmap uh, uh, that exists in uh, the country. So it's basically directed to to uh, take the to take the uh, share of uh, MSMEs uh, in GDP to the third level, uh, so basically it shouldn't be less than thirty three point eight, and then create uh, ten thousands of uh, vacancies, uh, and again uh, take the share of uh, processed uh, industry and the structure of uh, GDP and not less than 13.4. And uh, uh, to increase the share of the uh, medium enterprise, uh, entrepreneurship, medium enterprises in the economy, uh, not less than 13.7%. So we have 30 companies and over 90% is, uh, you know, they're covering like the total share but again we have the uh, monopolization uh, monopoly of that sort some sort so it's there besides the implementation this uh, government program we also need to uh, conduct a certain activities for promoting certain uh, use of uh, CRMs uh, and again uh, here we have to talk uh, about uh, the wastes and the future processing and then again adopt a target program for developing new technologies of the uh, secondary uh, processing of the waste and extracting the uh, CRMs from the waste. So here we have the different types of uh, funding, the public funding, uh, state programs. And also we have to uh, get the uh, provide, uh, conduct the assessment and uh, see where the small and medium enterprises stand. Uh, thank you very much. That's all for now. Thank you, um, Georgi, for that uh, very, very uh, detailed and comprehensive presentation. And um, I hope um, uh, people have uh, been uh, greatly enriched by all the information, very detailed information you have provided. Um, there could be some questions. So uh, 
I, I have a few questions to many people, uh, but I see Arkadi uh, raising the hand. So if I, I will give the first up opportunity to Arkadi. Uh, Arkadi is a director with the Ministry of Mining and Energy in Kyrgyzstan. And uh, I, I welcome Arkadi to this uh, workshop and also request you to uh, make your comment. Thank you, Arkadi. Thank you, Arkady, for your question. When it comes to the waste, uh, so here is where we stand. The large enterprise, uh, I mean, mining uh, large enterprise, um, we don't we don't have them anymore. One of the largest ones was uh, Kuptor. So during the USSR uh, on the uh, territory of Kyrgyzstan, we have a different uh, time, but different types of uh, tailings, uh, and that, of course, uh, contain uh, the CRMs. But uh, serious work uh, on extracting CRMs from there is not uh, taking place uh, because uh, small and medium enterprises they can't uh, invest this huge amounts of money for conducting those research works on extracting that uh, critically, critically important component. And like Georgi uh, mentioned, uh, all our tailings, uh, so this is, uh, these are the future projects and maybe uh, later on we will have uh, large enterprises that would find that interesting on uh, developing uh, technogenic uh, uh, deposits. But again, if we talk about uranium during the processing of uh, uh, the uh, waste uranium, so the component uh, was uh, the, you know, the following that, you know, in order to extract the uh, CRM from the tailing was not possible. But again, uh, I want to emphasize that the scientific studies, uh, you know, the small and medium enterprises wouldn't be able to afford uh, to conduct those uh, research studies. But again, there are no preferences uh, in this regard. So the only thing what is done in terms of the tailings is that they're being, uh, you know, they're being conserved uh, and stored prop um, in the right way. I think in this regard, the technical education uh, for small enterprises can be presented in terms of innovation economy. When people will start uh, using the startups uh, correctly, so you said that uh, they need support. Maybe they just we just need to justify or work it out. Maybe we'll need to conduct the inventory, uh, you know, and see what kind of mineral education they have. And also how they can use uh, all that uh, data in startups. Because we can uh, bring on board our Kazakh companies, right? When it comes to forming that, uh, that kind of uh, companies. And then we can expand to the whole region. Yes, yes, I agree with you. Small comment from my side. Um, most probably that this kind of work um, uh, at this point of time is possible for the company uh, that is, uh, you know, has operations in the mining, uh, extraction, uh, you know, of 
different, uh, you know, but again, it, it, uh, you know, small companies uh, cannot uh, do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dimitri, um, for that thank answer. You. And thank you, Arkady, for uh, asking that question. Um, do we have any other question from the floor? Uh, I saw a few people putting on the cameras, but uh, if you have uh, a question to ask, uh, please turn on your uh, mic and just ask, or uh, you can raise the hand function, uh, or you can just put on the camera, then I can call on you. Um, I'm not seeing any uh, anybody else uh, uh, now from the floor. Um, I, I have a couple of questions, but we, we don't have much time, but uh, uh, still, uh, uh, what I want to inform, not only um, the experts here, but all of you is that uh, critical raw materials uh, is now part of climate financing. Uh, and as we know, um, the global climate financing commitment, uh, commitment to projects that will uh, that will uh, contribute to lowering the carbon emission is about $135 trillion. So $135 trillion of funding uh, is supposed to come in uh, from public and private finances for various climate related projects. So that project includes, you know, solar energy, wind energy, and uh, energy efficiency and all. Uh, so far, uh, there was no uh, consideration for critical raw materials in this funding uh, grant scheme of uh, funding. But now, uh, UNECE and our regional commissions and the UN Secretary General is trying to rise awareness on trying to uh, bring, develop projects that can get funding from these climate initiatives. So with, in this, I have a question to both uh, Georgie and then Dimitri, uh, is how ready is a project, CRM projects in Kazakhstan? Uh, and if, if there are uh, climate funding available to develop uh, one or two projects. Uh, can you say, uh, will they be ready for funding today? Uh, are, are there bankable projects available in Kazakhstan for CRM development today? My first question is to, um, to Georgie and then Dimitri. Georgie first. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, in those recommendations that I uh, posted, uh, uh, listed in my presentation, so the first item was um, talking about the inventory of the waste. So I think that inventory uh, of the waste is very essential uh, and uh, necessary but at the same time, uh, nobody wants to fund uh, this kind of uh, topic. So we all know that we have billions tons of waste, uh, but uh, nobody knows what it contains. We all know what is being produced and what are we storing when it comes to waste, but it is unclear in what uh, volume and what is uh, in what exactly it contains, because we know that uh, CRM, um, you know, is there in large volumes. And it's very important there. We need to understand what to do with all uh, those great amounts of waste that contains uh, CRMs. Uh, thank you, Georgie. Uh, I think from your opinion, the, the waste or the secondary sources is a top priority for funding in Kazakhstan. Um, thank you for that. We have to take up this discussion further because uh, we are going to COP27 um, 
in Egypt in few months. And uh, this is where we need more inputs from you. Where are those bankable projects? And I will now go to Dimitri to ask, um, you said 20 deposits of CRMs in Kyrgyzstan. Um, can you select one which is ready for, which has got a bankable feasibility study? Yes, yeah, yes, uh, we have a few of them. Yes, uh, we can look uh, at uh, all those deposits. Um, um, as I said uh, earlier, there are two large uh, deposits, uh, Kutasai 2 and Sorosai uh, is the medium one, but the rest of them are uh, really uh, micro, so small. Uh, small uh, deposits, but I can prepare the list uh, of uh, those deposits uh, a little bit later. But uh, answering your question and uh, about the inventory of all the tailings, I think it's very important, uh, especially on the tailings of all different uh, productions. And I agree with uh, Georgi when it comes to the uh, topic of tailings on. Uh, using the technogenic, the technogenic usage uh, of uh, all those uh, tailings, uh, because we have to raise it on the legislation level, and especially also when solving the um, those issues professionally. Uh, thank you, uh, Dimitri. I, I get the same uh, answer from Kyrgyzstan. Also, you have um, a lot of secondary or the tailings or waste materials from the past from which uh, critical raw materials can be uh, removed. Um, same is with Kazakhstan. We have a question from er uh, Erkin Bekke. Um, Erkin, please come and ask the question. Uh, In Akchus, so they, nothing is developed there. Uh, yes, yeah, so, um, I can't uh, uh, be uh, tell you like hundred uh, percent information about that. Uh, don't quote me here. Uh, but as to the tailings, there uh, yes, there are radioactive elements as far as I uh, know, and there are certain. Um, number uh, left of CRMs after the production, but I don't have exact data on Actu's uh, deposit. Uh, so this uh, deposit is shut down, right? Yes, this deposit was uh, under the license on uh, processing, future processing. This is Kutasai 2. So this is also the same uh, area. So here, Unfortunately, they were facing some legal issues uh, with the previous own, uh, owners. Yes, but it's not operational now. But it's not shut down. It's still, uh, you know, it's just they have some issues, legal issues. Uh, thank you, um, Yerkin, for asking the question and Dimitri for answering. Um, again, uh, if somebody asks, has a question, we can take one or two more. Um, but uh, let me, in the meantime, remind everyone that uh, both um, both Georgi and um, uh, Dimitri and Arkady and all others in this room is that uh, we need to have some bankable uh, projects now, uh, which can produce CRMs that can support the low carbon energy transition. So these projects will have to be highlighted and presented um, to the COP27 event. And the uh, UN Secretary General has, our highest boss in the UN system, the Secretary General, uh, has taken the responsibility of presenting all the projects which are ready for funding, if you if we can highlight them. So it is, it is a collective task for all of us uh, who are present here from Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan to think about uh, what all projects uh, can be made small projects to big medium projects or big projects. It, it is uh, irrespective. Many of you may be working in small uh, consulting companies. 
even those companies, if you think that you can build a project, uh, I think uh, you should be uh, getting in touch with me or our colleagues uh, in, in, in Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan and, and see how we can move forward this project, highlight this project and put the proposal to the uh, climate champions of UN so that this could be promoted as uh, fund for, uh, investment ready projects. And uh, this is a huge task with us and uh, it has got a lot of importance because uh, we are not getting enough CRMs which are required for the huge rollout of wind power and solar power which is being envisaged uh, across the globe. So this is the right time to um, take action this is a huge opportunity, and I, I request all of you um, to be part of that uh, initiative. Uh, we can think about primary deposits of CRMs, critical raw materials, or secondary, like the tailings and waste materials. Um, and I, I will request all of you to put your um, thinking caps on and think about how uh, we can uh, uh, select uh, key projects that can deliver results in, in a, a short term. And in that case, uh, we can assure that uh, the UN system will be promoting that projects to get funding into those projects. Um, is there any comments from you, um, Georgie, regarding the investment readiness of the projects? Final comment from you, Georgie? regarding Kazakhstan? You know, since the uh, capacity of deposits or of, uh, I mean, uh, since the CRMs uh, in the deposits, uh, you know, in the amount wise, it's a large one. And uh, we can choose a certain projects, uh, maybe, yeah, certain project that can be used as a um, sample here. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Georgie. Uh, over to you, um, Dimitri. Can uh, do you think that in uh, we can select um, one or two projects which are bankable uh, or which can produce results in short time, both primary and uh, tailings and waste projects? Yes, of course, uh, we can uh, study them and uh, work it out and uh, discuss it with the colleagues and uh, uh, select uh, one, two. Yes, of course, it's possible. Thank you. I think um, this is um, not the end of our workshop or project. I think this is a beginning. And uh, I will encourage all of you, if you have ideas, be in touch with um, uh, Georgie and Dimitri and share your ideas. Uh, Arkady is also there. Arkady represents the ministry uh, in Kyrgyzstan, so you can get in touch with him. Uh, we have to come together and propose a few projects uh, which can get funding. So uh, this is a challenge for us, and we have to take the opportunity to respond to the challenge. And I, I hope that all of you can join uh, this initiative. Um, we are, uh, if there is no more questions or comments, uh, we can close the workshop for now. We are a little bit over time. Um, if I don't see anyone in, in next uh, raising hands in next one or two seconds, uh, let us close the um, workshop now. Um, I, 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 am, I thank uh, both uh, Dimitri and Georgie uh, for making this presentation and showing us the potential for CRMs in Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. Uh, I am also. I also thank uh, all the people who have attended this workshop and listened listen to the presentation from beginning to end. And those 
who have asked questions and commented on the presentation. Uh, I also thank uh, all the UNDP colleagues who have supported this event uh, by facilitating the, um, the, the Zoom platform and other logistics. I also thank my colleague Nadesha for doing all the background work. I, I am also finally commend the wonderful uh, interpretations given uh, by our interpretation colleagues. And uh, I hope that uh, we will all have a chance to meet physically sometime in future rather than through Zoom. With this, let us conclude this workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.